Hello lovely Virgo, let's see what's in store for you in October 2023. We are looking at your love life, we're looking at any messages that come in, channeled messages for you, what you should expect, what you're not going to be expecting, obstacles, the whole bit. Okay, so go and get yourself a cup of tea or if it's anything like it is in here, an iced tea and an ice pack. I'm kind of working in a very hot room today. Oh, nice. Okay, I'm going to take two. Ooh. I'm going to take two cards for you, Virgo, which show us the energy that kind of crowns the whole of the month. Your overall energy cards, and I think you're going to be quite pleased with these, actually. So, Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, cross watching. If it does turn out to be your story, there will be an extended reading, as there is every month. In that reading, we take all these cards from the YouTube and we get freaky, do some channeling, get some different decks out. We ask, how do they feel about you? All that kind of stuff. That will be the first link, as always, in the description box if it turns out to resonate with you. Okay, overall energy cards, we have the Eight of Pentacles. This is the Golden Wheel Tarot, so wheels are pentacles. Eight of Pentacles, which is Sun in Virgo. I know, it's you. This is a card that talks about doing the work, which for a Virgo is your um, modus operandi, it's what you do. Virgo is a sign of service, you're good at doing the work. Some people say you're incredibly organised. I know some messy Virgos, but there is an organisational structure within the mess. Let me know in the comments section, please. I'm gathering information on all astrological signs so the big thing with Virgo, are they messy, are they neat, are you really into spreadsheets? Let us know in the comments section. Now, dun dun dun, you also get the Ace of Cups. Wowzers, gorgeous energy. Now who did I do that got the Ace of Cups? I don't know, it might be Scorpio, not sure. Ended up as the thumbnail anyway, so have a look. Now then, Ace of Cups, of course, the Cup of Love very very nice we've got two fish swimming in different directions around this cup now for me this signifies when you flip to your Pisces side so I think we talked about this briefly before obviously your opposite sign is Pisces so they, there is an ability in you to flip into your Pisces mode and Pisces do the same, I'm a Pisces, and we can very much flip into our more organized state of Virgo. So you could also be involved with a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, or this could be new love coming in or renewal of an old bond. Either way, the Ace of Cups is a card to be revered and celebrated. It's love, it's self-love, it's pure love, it's innocence, it may be working at something you love. It could be a dream job. I'm going to take my shoes off. Let's do this. I'm taking my shoes off. You take your shoes off. We're all taking our shoes off. Oh, that's better, actually. Woof. Okay, so yeah, could be a dream career, dream job, starting of a business, new relationship, the whole bit. Let's look first at career, then I'm going to look at your love life. Whoa, so career is juicy. Yes, totally get this. The Eight of Pentacles as a card always has somebody doing the job, okay? So they start making the pentacles, they're hammering the pentacles out. The next day they turn up, they've hung them up here, they go back, they're hanging the pentacles out. This is the way that it goes with the Eight of Pentacles. It's, um, what do the Buddhists call it? Chop wood, draw water and then rinse and repeat, you know? Some people, if you get this card coming up and we're looking at career, it can mean that you're sort of done with a particularly repetitive or just not enjoyable job. And for career, I get the Eight of Cups. Notice in this a few things, one, there are eight cups at the beginning of the card. They're right at the front. Two, someone is distancing themselves, walking away from them. 
and three, we have an eclipse in the sky. Now then, again, this is a Pisces card. So it's Saturn in Pisces. Saturn is the rather strict taskmaster ruler of Capricorn. Okay, so think of it as like an old head teacher at school. Don't do this, don't walk in the hallways, don't cause a fuss, all those things. Pisces, which is you when you flip into your more emotional side, actually, because you Virgos are quite a bunch of softies, I know. Pisces, it's like Saturn going to Pisces. Why are you letting them walk on you like this? Uh, I, why are you in a job that you don't want? Why are you doing something that is not your dream? This is not fulfilling you. You are not feeling happy with this. You are not living an authentic life, Virgo, is the message that I'm getting here. Now, of course, we're going to look at your love life and it could bleed into other areas as often it does. You know, it's from one area to another area to another area. But here with this Eight of Cups, somebody is just deciding to distance themselves, to walk away, that they're done with this, completely done with this. Eight of Cups is a card of exit, walking away, had enough. In some way, you will be doing this in your life, okay? I'm just going to close the window, actually. God, I thought it felt unreasonably drafty in here. Don't want the whole street hearing the tarot reading. Okay. Eight of Cups is the turning point. I feel like we've got two eclipses in October. One's on the 14th, one is on the 28th, and I feel like there are turning points and you will be making them. Interesting. Now, what do you get with it? The star. This is Aquarius energy, but it's also the energy of wishing on a star, dreaming big, reaching for the stars, manifesting what you want, not letting go of your dreams, okay? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful energy. Love this for you, absolutely gorgeous. So with this star card, this is you just literally going back to the drawing board of who you really are and what you really want and what your talents truly are and what you can really do and what makes you happy, what switches you on, what makes you want to do more of it rather than get that horrible feeling on a Sunday night or maybe even a Sunday morning or afternoon that soon I'll be going back to work and I can't, oh, I just can't, can't stand it. Now, the eclipses on the 14th and the 28th of October, I would say this would be occurring more towards the end of the month, but it's probably been on your mind for quite a long time. Let's take two cards for what is not expected about every subject this month, just in general, okay? Nice. That's good. Oh, wow. I love your reading, Virgo. Let's have a look at the cards. They're worth looking at. Okay, so we're starting with the Eight of Pentacles. We're talking about what we love, who we love, first love, our relationships, pure love, innocence. And then we have the Eight of Cups walking away from something when it comes to career and our life path and also reaching for something else that is very much something you really want from a soul point of view. You know, it's you're not doing it because you think it might be a good stopgap or anything like that. It's a soul thing. You're like, I need this. I need this in my life. And then we're looking at what's coming in that's unexpected. What do we not know about? And we get a whole load of fire over here. We get the Knight of Wands. This could be a person. It could be a relationship. It could be somebody or a job opportunity that is much more animated than the one you had before. Knight of Wands is interesting. They're desirable. They're the one who's coming along with all of the kind of 
the red hair and the orange clothes and the fancy horse and the zippity doo dah and the charisma. And here they are, unexpectedly coming into your life. So this can be new love, it can be um, an ignition of passion into a relationship, but also riding straight into the sun, no less. The sun is good luck, radiance, happiness. Ah, it's all good. This is all good. Don't be afraid, for example, if you're looking around for a job, don't be afraid to be sticking your hat in the ring for things that you'd normally say, oh gosh, I'm not really qualified for that. Or I don't, you know, I think they'd be looking for someone different. No, not this month. You're the one, okay? You've got it going on here. You've got some real clout this month. Romantically, I would also say, tsst, and woof, all at the same time. If you are single, put away the apple packers and get out your disco pants, okay? Something a bit like this. Yes, you know what I'm saying. I would put yourself out there. If you're in an existing love connection, this is fantastic news. It's like a whole breath of fresh air. It's like someone has refilled a tank. Shall we look at your love life? Yes. Hit the thumbs up button if you're liking the look of this. Ka-ching. I'm liking the look of this. I'm not even a Virgo. Maybe I could be like an honorary one just this month. Okay, love life. Let's just zoom out a wee bit. That's it, perfect. Put them up there. Ooh, what is that? Okay. In your love life, we have two threes. We've got the three of wands, which is passion, building, to do with this fire, opportunity, charisma. Um, it's good stuff, you know, hot stuff. But what is this three of swords? And what is my wobbly table? Three of swords is when you have difficult situations. It's usually in the past and it's usually made a mark on you. It makes it difficult for you to trust. You haven't processed the old memory of it and it makes you feel, it makes you feel like you just can't, you know, like you're stuck somewhere. It's that kind of energy. Let's take a, another card actually. I'm going to take a couple more cards for this because some of you, this is a bit of a rough patch of something. You're stuck here. Okay, Queen of Swords, I like that. Ooh, King of Wands, I really like that too. Right. Some of you, if you're already in a connection with somebody, it's a person who's got all these fire cards. Okay, so Leo, Aries, Sagittarius or somebody who is quite extrovert, even if they seem introvert, and quite physically attractive. I think you find them very attractive, this person. Now, if this is you and you're in a connection with this person, I think that there's gonna be a lot here about your boundaries. This has come up a lot for a lot of signs many times this year. The Queen of Swords represents boundaries. And this person, the King of Wands, is not usually very interested in boundaries. Neither is the Knight of Wands. That's their charm, almost, because they kind of just go on regardless and you end up enjoying yourself anyway. But there's something here about you needing to make it very clear what you find acceptable and what you don't, because this Three of Swords is troubling. The King of Wands and the Knight of Wands and the Sun is not at all troubling. It's lovely. And the Three of Wands. So much fire and passion. Ooh, Five of Pentacles. Let me just get rid of me a minute. With the Hierophant, also a number five, but major arcana. Okay. 
Virgo, there's something for you to learn about a relationship. We've got the Five of Pentacles here. And the Five of Pentacles is when you need to work something out. But you kind of need to work it out almost on your own. So there may be a little period here of solitude, which is for a Virgo being the hermit, I mean, this is a kind of, you don't find that very difficult normally. You may need to go out on a limb about a certain issue with this person. You may find there are things that you don't want to participate in with this person and you want to make this known to them with the Five of Pentacles. The Hierophant is all about learning. It's about learning who you are. It's about learning who they are. And I think this pertains to your whole reading, actually. It's about learning what you want to do for a living. It's about learning what actually makes your heart sing, what gives you pleasure. And sometimes you need to separate yourself from others to find that. And you're okay with that. I'm just going to take a couple more cards here. I'm going to do some love oracle cards as well. Now you've got a lot of threes. There's a lot of growth when you get loads of threes. Okay. You need to be asking yourself in a love relationship, is this person on side? If we look at this, we've got the three of pentacles. This is about working together. It's about cooperation, creating something together, being practical, showing up, doing the work, being there. And this card, the seven of cups, is about being romantic, having loads of choices, future that is filled with possibility with this person, but you're not sure which cup you can choose and you're not even sure if you choose a cup, if it's actually real. And this is something that might be coming up in all the areas of your life, okay? What is real? What is fanciful or just not sustainable? Get the Page of Swords. Oh, and the two. Okay, that's fine. Page of Swords is little bits of information. Text messages, small conversations. Um, small, it's like the beginning of something because it's a page. So it's not a deep, long conversation at four o'clock in that goes on till four o'clock in the morning. It's more a short text, a snippet, somebody starting a conversation, somebody starting out very, very much like a text message or WhatsApp, something like that kind of a length. When we have the Two of Swords, the universe is just saying, whoa, Nelly, you're not supposed to be doing things quickly. And even though whenever you get the Two of Swords or you get the Hanged Man is the other one, you have a feeling that you wish it were quicker, you wish it was happening sooner, it's very important to know that the universe is holding it back for a reason. It wants you to see a key piece of information, a piece of the jigsaw you might have missed. In the extended reading, I'm going to look at your person quite a lot, actually, because I feel like they're not actually showing up much in the reading in themselves. So I'm going to look at the Ace of Cups, the Eight of Cups. I'm going to look at the Three of Swords. I'm going to look at the King of Wands as well. And we're going to ask, how do they feel about you? What is the shadow side? What do we need to know? Okay, let's have a couple of love cards. These are Belinda Grace True Love Oracle cards. This one has come up so many times this month.
Oh, my word. Okay. Right. This is about finding inner peace and your own authenticity as a person. With somebody, without somebody, doesn't matter. It's about you feeling comfortable in your own skin, in who you are. That Ace of Cups is about that too that you got, but also it's about this in your career too, feeling like you're really fulfilling your potential, like nobody else could do this like you can, like you're doing something you're fascinated with, that you love. Then we get the distorted feminine coming in. The distorted feminine is when you're finding it hard to ask for help, you're finding it hard to receive, you're feeling like you need to control things, when actually you can let the control go. And you will find that other people will step in. And this can very much be in the romantic situation as well, that you're not receiving when people want to give because you're frightened they're gonna get it wrong or because you can't trust, like that Three of Swords, that you're scared. It's all very um, natural and normal, but at the same time, there's just something about it. Somebody wants to be able to give to you, whether it's at work, whether it's in love, and it's for you to be able to receive and blossom within that gift. And then we get boundaries. Of course we do. We've talked about this with the Queen of Swords. There, in your love life, I feel like there either is going to be or there is already somebody that is powerfully attractive for you. And this may cause you to abandon yourself at points in time. And this is about working on your own boundaries so that you actually are practicing the self-care of this Ace of Cups so that you are looking after yourself and so that you actually become more magnetic to somebody who is healthy energy that does want to give to you. This month is a turning point for you Virgo and it's subtle. It's not going to really advertise itself as such but it's a turning point and it's a good turning point and it's where you stop people pleasing and you start pleasing yourself. And weirdly, people have never been more happy with you than when you do that. I know, life is weird, isn't it? Virgo, I'm gonna go and do the extended reading. Um, do hit the like button, do subscribe if you want more daily readings, pick a card readings, love readings, etc. And it does support the channel, so thank you very much for that. And if you want the extended reading, that is the first link in the description box and it's where I'm going now. See you soon. Namaste.